Hello everyone and welcome to a pain voice slow talk on the offline race timing ancestor problem. I know I have a pain voice slow, but in this case, it really great. And yes, we won't be covering much more than an initial algorithm, a uh, rather early result for this problem. Now, the natural question for this is, what exactly is a least common ancestor? I'm sure most of you have a solid intuition behind it. Given this tree here, if we pick two nodes, A and C, the least common ancestor is the first ancestor both of them share. Alternatively, it's the farthest ancestor they share away from the root in this tree it's J. But that's not exactly rigorous. So let's get some basics out of the way. Given a rooted tree T with vertices V and edges E and two vertices X and Y, then we say that Y is a descendant of X if the unique path P from X to Y has the property that it is descending in the rooted tree, which is to say if the path is X0 through Xn, then Xi is Xi plus one's parent. That allows us to properly define the least common ancestor of X and Y. Namely, it's the vertex V furthest from the root such that X and Y are both descendants of V. An alternative formulation viewing the tree as a normal mathematical graph rather than a tree data structure is to say that the least common ancestor is the vertex V on that unique path from X to Y that is closest to the root. Sadly, least common ancestor is not about what is the most unusual node that is attacked for another time. Now, the least common ancestor problem is that given the region tree we mentioned and two separate vertices, we want to efficiently compute the least common ancestor of X and Y. This, the most common application I've seen this in is when examining the intelligent hierarchy in object relation programming. Of course, that was just from a quick overview. I don't believe that's the original use. Um, I actually don't know if the original use the papers were behind the paywall. It came up in my research uh, the work on spoilers when we were viewing the modifications to an arbitrary database as a tree and being able to rapidly get the least common ancestors obviously told me to like to have. Now, sometimes it makes more sense to have all the pairs of vertices that we're going to query before we actually do any of the querying. This is the offline version of the least common ancestral problem. Given the region tree T and then pairs of vertices, efficiently compute the least common ancestor for each of the N pairs. Are there any questions up to now? Now, most of the work we're going to be covering, which was developed by Targent here, he basically single-handed the framework for the algorithm we're going to be discussing and the accepted data structures. However, if you actually search for our five risk having ancestors, most of the papers in which you see will reference a paper targeted co-wrote with 
H A the Bull. Now, this paper they wrote, slightly improved as a result, will be showing you. It's a very nice result, however, it's outside the scope of this paper. Now, the result we're going to be showing is that the offline or East Charming Ancestral problem can be solved in time order of m plus n times alpha of m plus n n, where alpha is n inverse of the actual mean function. Now note that I say alpha is n inverse, not the inverse. That's because it's defined in a slightly unusual manner. And also, it's not quite the inverse of the actual mean function proper. It's a slight variant. However, it maintains the, the, the incredibly high growth rate, and as such, alpha has an incredibly low growth rate. If I recall correctly, Tony notes that for n less than 2 to the 16th, alpha will always be 1, and for a quote unquote reasonable, choice of n, it will be less than 2. Now, here is the actual original algorithm that Tarjun made. As you can see, I've scanned in a copy, or rather, taking a print screen of a scan. I've done that for two reasons. One is that I'm a single guy and use any type of pseudocode that includes OD to end a do statement. Session is that the notation in general in gorgeous portraits of ending is rather outdated. And in general, here, the way he wrote it is a bit hard to parse. Now, that being said, you can and immediately see one thing that sticks out about this algorithm. Namely, it has a bunch of references to functions that are defined. Namely, union and find. If you look at the previous, uh, at the pre previous algorithm, it's here in the procedure search where you you need two nodes and then find the node. What do we mean by this? Anyone who doesn't know the answer, take a moment and try to figure it out. Now, if you didn't know the answer, which I actually hope is the case, otherwise you probably see this algorithm, then it turns out uh, that the least creative answer you can come up with is in fact correct. Union and find are part of the appropriately named Union Find data structure. Obviously, the creators of this were incredibly creative and their meanings. Anyway, Union Find is a data structure that operates on families of disjoint sets. It provides three operations. Create, which adds a singleton to the data structure. You input some element and the set container access element. Union, which merges two sets in the data structure. You give two elements x and y. It finds the sets that they belong to, and then moves them. And finally, find, which returns a fixed representative element in the set containing x. When I say fixed, I mean it doesn't matter what element of the set they call, it's always the same. Obviously, it may change as the set changes. So let's work through an example. First we're going to call create x. 
a disgrace, a single hit, to hear the drama of hearts. It's here is bold because it is trivial, the representative element, so that's why I call create Y, which adds a similar singleton for Y, and create Z for a similar singleton for Z. Really, it's quite different of stuff. So now let's do something I could be interested. Local union of X and Y. This will just those two singletons into a single set. And arbitrarily will choose Y to be the uh, representative element. It doesn't need to be Y. It depends on the implementation. Here it just says. And you call to find X or find Y, we'll now return Y. So to continue this, we now union X and Z. Even though X isn't a representative element of its set, we determine said set and add Z to it. And again, arbitrarily, X becomes the representative element. Doesn't need to be. But it depends on the implementation. Now I need her to find will return X. Anyone have any problems with that example? Okay. Now, there are many ways you can imagine implementing a union find data structure. You could do it in a trivial way by having each set be a link to us and just merging them together. That would be incredibly slow, but it would work. Tarjan does it by representing each set as a tree. The root serves as a representative element. He also includes two rules and implement a union and find. Naturally, for find, you're going to take your element and lock up the parent pointer until you reach the root. And actually, for union, you're going to make one root the child of another root. The two rules he adds are her on a collapsing find and the weighted union. Now, with the collapsing find, illustrated in this first figure, which I've taken from his paper, I'm sure he doesn't know, and we wash up to find the parent node, I'm sorry, the root node, and then we set the node's parent to be the root. That way, any future calls to find take over one at least until another union occurs. We also do this for all of the node's ancestors. So we try to find an A, send it to E, B, U then becomes E, C becomes E, and D becomes E. Now, the other rule he introduces is weighted union. One more union two trees. We include with each tree some type of size. And we have the small tree become the child of the larger tree. So in this figure again taken from his paper, the tree of I'm sorry, the tree T1 would have to have smaller size than tree T2. Now, in Tarjan's original paper, he was actually talking about size as a number of elements. However, modern implementations use depth of the tree or rank, keeps it a bit more balanced. So, more formally, these become the following pseudo showed algorithms. Find first checks if X is the root. 
And with that, number four simply finds the root from X's parent and sets the result to be X's parent. Just as we said, simple, easy. Union's a bit more complex. We uh, take two elements, X and Y. Now, Tarzan assumed that X and Y were already roots. If that's not the case, we should simply add these two lines. Now, that does have some asymptotic effect, thankfully for our purposes, we're always calling it on an element that is either already the root or since the collapse and finds at most one or two away from the root. So, for us it doesn't matter. But anyway, we take these two roots. If they're equal, the trees are already the same. But otherwise, we have the one that is less deep. We made the up child of the deep tree. So if X is hot, has normal length, it becomes less child tree, and vice versa. Now, this data structure, as we would hope, performs well. Given a family of different set, let's put it in N elements. A sequence of N, M phones, and N minus one unions takes time. So you have M of alpha, and N, where alpha is that inverse of the Ackerman function. Now, if you want to prove this, it's a dense page, it's a black metric. It's one of those proofs. Well, oh, you can't quite make out anything. But it is correct and it is doable. Are there any questions? Now, get back on track. Recall Tolkien's original algorithm for offline least having ancestor. We got M pairs and we have this algorithm in its stand outdated format and glory. Really, I do want to stress. Not only does each do statement and with OG, it also ends with a semicolon. Talking about redundancy. Let's try to parse this monster with a graphical example. What Tantra was ultimately said to be illustrated by looking at it, three with eight elements, we're going to have two pairs, B, D, and F, E. This is the tree. So A has three children, and one of those children, B, has its uh, has two children every town. As you can see, it's very easy to see the results. E and F have at least how many answers would be, and B and D have at least how many answers would be. So, what we're going to do under Tolkien's algorithm is we're going to create on every element in the graph. We're going to make each one a singleton set under a union find data structure. And then we're going to do an oil lock along the graph. So we're going to start way from A to B, no problem. B to E, no problem. And then here's when things get interesting. When we go back up from E to B, we're going to Union, E and B. Seems simple, simple. So now when we go from B to F, we know the something. We are now reaching the second element in the pair, F E. And if we call find E, it's going to return the representative element of E B. 
Thus we will provoke sin if we give it that represent the environment appointed you to be. We now be able to get the least from the ancestral BNF immediately. And that's the basic idea behind this algorithm. So as we pass through each pair, the second time we reach it, which then have the property that the highest element in the set containing the first element of the pair is the least common ancestry. So from E and F we have B. Returning up, we add F to the uh, set E B or genital B union B F A N. Then we're going to go from B to A, and the genital union B A. Now we'll be going down to C. You know that if C had been a pair, then one of the previous elements in that pair had been B U F, we'd be able to use the A right above. When we return from C, we're going to add it to the set again. Then we're going to go to D. As I said, we're going to uh, find B. Then we'll get the representative element. And as always, we will keep it. We craft a bit of a sufficient bookmark that we put into A. As such, we get A. Then we return it from D to A. And the algorithm said, Hopefully that gives you a quick idea. The only real book work we need to do is a cheap and craft of that topmost element of the set. Because keep in mind, we haven't specified the unified implementation we use it. So we have no guarantee that that topmost element will actually be the representative element. Hence why we did that pointer. Moreover, we need to keep our bookmark to make sure that we're only tracking, uh, we're only calling find when we reach the second element of a pair. We should do that by color coding each node. So, are there any questions about that? Okay, so let's convert that picture I never had into an actual algorithm. The code is very simple. It's a recursive algorithm. This is the version that's presented on Wikipedia. I'm using it largely because it's a lot clearer than the draft version I'm using. So I don't. It is really not fun to look at this in Java. It is a pain. But anyway, let me be to you. We're gonna set it to ancestor to be itself. That way it's at least initialized if we ever call it. Then for all of its children, we're gonna recursively try this procedure. Then we're going to union the result to the sets with you and set the representative elements ancestry to be you. Now, this ends up being correct largely by properties of depth for search. In fact, in charge of the original paper, that was his proof of correctness. It was heard during the sentence by properties of depth for search. Anyway, once we've got to it of use children, we set its color to black, meaning that it's been completely searched. This is the bookkeeping that lets us see if we're on the second element of a pair. Next, we're going to go to all the pairs that includes you. If V is black, meaning that it was already completed 
from me now, Jack, the least charming ancestor of you and me, is found to be this ancestor. Now, I am reading notes that we are implicitly assuming that we should find all those new description names that are going to script for some reason and do the same. But you've got to be a bit sick for that. So, without thinking about it at all, if you haven't seen this beforehand, how quick do you think this algorithm is? Well, if you remember the theorem from way back a year, you should be able to figure out the right time. But, assuming you don't, let's figure it out. Now that we finally understand the theorem, let's get the right time from it. That first term we had when we go through all the children implies that each egg causes one union and one find. Similarly, that second loop where we iterate through the pairs implies that each pair is going to cause the implication of one find. As such, the algorithm inverts M plus N minus one finds and N minus one unions. And assuming we use Trojans Union find in the structure that will take time of oh, M plus N times alpha and M plus N M where alpha is that really slow growth in function. Now this isn't when you're telling even though for all intents and purposes it is. However, there are improvements to this algorithm that get you telling your time. The very nice that was the work by Trojan and Jabel that I mentioned. Unfortunately, I do believe I'm running out of time and as such, they will be out of the scope of this talk. With that, were there any questions?